Hello and welcome to Gabbit Media, I'm Grant Abbott and I'm going to go through the complete beginner's guide to Blender 2.8. We're going to be going through the interface and making a funny sheep. So first of all, the keys that I'm using are down on the bottom left here, so if I click on anything, you can see it coming up here. To move around the interface, you can hold down the middle mouse button, circle your objects, you can shift middle click to strafe and use your middle click or wheel to zoom in and out. You can only do this whilst in this viewport window. So if I'm middle clicking over here, it's not doing anything. To select objects, you left click, and you can obviously shift left click like most programs to select multiple objects, as you can see there. They'll be highlighted by this orange outline. And if you click anywhere but those objects, it will deselect them. Or you can press Alt-A. There are other selection options up here, and I'll go through those at a later date. To add objects, we can go up to our Add menu here, I prefer pressing Shift A for Add, and that will bring up that Add menu, but it's a keyboard shortcut, and it's really good to learn the keyboard shortcuts. You'll be able to navigate the program much faster. So the first thing to do is to try adding a couple of objects. Let's try the monkey, and you can see it's inside our other object. And can you see that tiny cursor there? That's our 3D cursor, and we can move that around with Shift right click, and whenever you add an object, it will appear where you've put that 3D cursor. So mine appeared in the middle. So we want to move that. There is a move gizmo here, which makes it easy for beginners. And there's a rotate gizmo and a scale gizmo. And this one has all of them in one. So for beginners, it's nice and easy to use that gizmo to learn to rotate things and scale things. If you click right in the center of the gizmo, you can use this sort of free form rotation. I prefer using the keyboard shortcuts, which are G for grab, R for rotate and S for scale. What may help you as well is that the numpad on your keyboard will give you different views. So seven is top view, one is front view, and three is side view. And we can hold middle click to come out of those sort of views. And that's your numpad, not the numbers across the top of your keyboard. What you may also find useful is orthographic mode. Five on your numpad. So this is orthographic mode and this is perspective mode. So perspective adds this sort of fake perspective and orthographic is without perspective. When you move into top view, side view or front view, that will automatically go to orthographic mode. So you can line your objects up nice and easily. So as a quick challenge, I suggest you try and line up five different objects in a row along here. So pause the video and have a go at that. Now hopefully you remembered that seven on your numpad is to go to top view and that makes life much more easier when lining things up. I'm going to shift right click to move my cursor point and then press shift A. Remember you can go to add up here, mesh. It's the same as pressing shift A, mesh, and I'll add a few different objects. So shift right click to add a new object, shift right click to move my cursor, shift A to add a new object. And once again, shift right click to move my cursor and shift A to add a new object. Then I'll go to front view to make sure they line up. I'll select these three at the same time by shift left click and press G to grab. You can of course use the gizmo, but I prefer to use the keyboard shortcuts. So hopefully you ended up with something like this. So what we're going to do now is use our newly found skills to make the fun sheep. So if I click away from these, it will deselect them. And I'm going to use my box select tool here, select box. You can also press B on your keyboard to box select as well. So I have these four selected and I can press delete to delete those. Now I accidentally deleted my lamp as well, but we can always add that in later. I'm going to click on my cube and a new tool now, full stop on your numpad or the period key on your numpad if you're American, will zoom you into the object. Then when you press the middle mouse button, you'll be able to zoom around that object. It centers your viewport, so full stop or period key on the numpad. So let's make our fun sheep. This is going to be made up out of cubes and a couple of spheres. Now currently, Blender 2.8 does crash occasionally, so it's a good idea to save your work at regular intervals. I'm going to save mine now, then I can just press Control S to keep writing over the same file. So we go to File, Save As, I'll just put it on my desktop and call it Sheep Tutorial. So I'm going to start with my default cube but it's slightly the wrong shape, so I'm going to scale it in the Z axis. You can see the axes up here, 
Z, Y, and X, so you know which way they're pointing, but Z is always up and it's blue, Y is green, and X is red. But again, you have them up here to guide you. And if I move around, you can see that they point in the different locations too. So what I want to do is scale in the Z axis. I can do that with my manipulator tool, coming up to the scale option here. But I'm actually going to turn off my manipulators by just clicking on the select option there. I prefer to use the keyboard shortcuts and I think it's good for beginners to get used to those. So with my cube selected, I'll press S then Z. So S is for scale and Z is the Z axis. And you can see it's constrained my scale to the Z axis. So about there is good. Now to move my 3D cursor is shift right click and I want to put it at the front of my cube here so that I can add a new cube into that position for the sheep's head. So shift A to add mesh cube but I need to scale this down so I'll just press S and move my mouse in. Now it's worth noting if I undo that if I press S and I'm near the middle of my object and I press S it goes in much larger increments and if I want it to go a bit slower when I'm scaling, I can move my mouse away from the object and press S and it's much easier to move. The other thing that's useful to know is if you press S then hold down shift, it's much, much smaller. So shift will be much smaller increments. Anyway, let's scale this down and I'm going to go to front view with one on my numpad and move it into position. So somewhere around there and I'm going to scale it in the X axis. So S then X and that's the x-axis going along here and remember you can look at your guide up here then middle mouse button and see what that looks like I think it needs to be repositioned into the center so let's go to top view for that and I can grab it with G and move it into the center there that's better and lastly with the middle mouse button let's move around and see what that looks like that looks great okay so I want to duplicate this and I'm going to make a funny sort of chin thing for my sheep and I think I need to be in front view for that so one on my keyboard so the x-axis is going across the front here and I'm going to do a new command this time rather than just inserting a new cube this is roughly the right size so I'm going to press shift D for duplicate shift D duplicate and then it will give me this duplicate I've not clicked on anything yet and then as soon as I left click that will paste it there I can then scale this down a bit, grab it and move it into position about there. Let's go to side view with three on my numpad and I'm going to scale that in the Y axis. So S then Y. Now it doesn't matter at the moment if you overlap your objects. So you can, if you want to press G then X. So grab it in the Z axis and overlap like that. That's absolutely fine. And I'm going to give this a tiny bit of overlap. I'm also going to move it in the Z axis, so G then Z, move it up to somewhere around there and scale it in the Z axis, so S then Z. And it's a bit too high, so G then Z to move it down. And you soon get used to these keyboard shortcuts and you'll be navigating very quickly. It's still actually a bit wide for my liking, so S then X. And now I feel like we're getting somewhere. So I want to add some short little legs for him. I'm just going to select this box, go to top view with seven on my numpad. And remember this is the numpad, not the keys across the top. So I want to duplicate this big cube here. So shift D and this time I'm just going to left click. That means my duplicate is in exactly the same place as the old one. If I G to grab that, you can see it there. And if I don't want this grab to do anything, I can just right click and it will go back to where it was. What I want to do is scale this down, but I'm not going to be able to see it in this mode. What I would like to be able to do is go to wireframe mode. Now you can change your modes up here. Here's solid and here's wireframe in terms of your viewport shading. If I go to wireframe now, it gives a wireframe to all my objects. So I can now scale down this to get it to my leg size and then grab it with G and move it into position. Now I'm going to duplicate this into these different areas. See if you can do that by yourself. So pause the video. So what I do is Shift D and then I can actually press X to constrain that duplicate to the X axis. Or I could have pressed Shift D and then left click here and then G then X to move it along the X axis. 
So that's two different ways of doing it. And I can press Shift, left click here to select both of them. Shift D to duplicate them both at the same time and then constrain it to the Y axis by pressing Y and move it across the Y axis. And they're still in the middle of my box at the moment. So I need to select these two as well. So they're all four selected. And let's go to front view with one on my numpad, G, then Z to move them down. And I'm just gonna move them a touch across so they're symmetrical. And remember you can hold down shift if you want small increments. Now I want this bit to sort of be a fluffy white bit and then a brown bit sticking out of the bottom of each of my legs. So I can press shift D to duplicate these and then press Z to move them in the Z axis because shift D already has the movement enabled and I want them about there. Now I want to scale them all down. So I press S, but they all scale into the center of each other. So in the sort of average point is there what we call a pivot point. So if I undo that with right clicking, because I've still got that command enabled and haven't set it with left click, I need to be able to scale them by their individual origins. Now I'm going to introduce you to a new tool at the top here which is the pivot point. Now you probably know this from other programs, but the pivot point is what any transforms are rotated, scaled, or moved around. So if I choose the 3D cursor, for example, and then press rotate, you can see where my 3D cursor is and they rotate around the 3D cursor. So if I right click to not set that, you can always press Ctrl Z as well to undo. What I want to do is for them to scale around their individual origins. So I will click that one and press scale. And you can see now they're scaling to their individual origins. So about there, let's go to front view with one on my numpad and I'm going to scale that in the Z axis. I've still got individual origins on. So let's put this back to the medium point. So the average point, which is more common. So up here, medium point, and that's the default. Okay, let's go back to solid mode up the top here and see what our sheep is looking like. We need a few more elements. I'm going to put some spheres on the front and a boxy mouth at the front here as well. So shift right click to move your cursor point and then shift A to add. Now see if you can add your spheres and your box to the sheep in the right positions for a face. So I press shift A, mesh sphere. Let's scale that right down with S, and then I'll go to front view there, a bit too small at the moment. So I move that up to about there, and Shift D, and copy that across to about there. It's gonna have wibbly wobbly eyes. And I'd like them to stick out the front a little bit more as well, so I'll go to top view for this, with seven on my numpad, G to grab, and somewhere around here. There we go, he's looking quite fun. And I want a box just here, so Shift right click, Shift A, mesh cube, too big at the moment, so scale it right down. And I want to scale that in the Y axis. And there we have a funny looking sheep. Now I've noticed the eyes aren't central, so I'm just going to go to top view, zoom in a bit with my wheel, and move these across slightly, grab with the G key, move them to there. And I want to be able to add a sphere at the front, and I'm gonna texture that with a black texture like a pupil eventually. So let's zoom into these objects with full stop or period key on the numpad. And let's select this one, Shift D to duplicate, right click to set it in the same place. And then I'm going to grab it and move it out and scale it down. Now I'm just doing this by eye now, rather than using set axes. If I press G, I can just move it perpendicular to the camera. And he's gonna look a bit wacky, so I'll put that out to the side here and I'll Shift D to duplicate, and that one can go maybe up there somewhere. So it looks like a slightly mad looking sheep. Now he could do with a base, I think. So I'm going to take the top cube. So I'm going to take the biggest cube, duplicate that with Shift D, right click so it stays in the same place, and G to grab in the Z axis, G then Z. Move that down to somewhere around here. Then go to front view with one, which is actually working as a side view in a sense in this case, but generally we call this front view because it's got the X axis going across the middle. 
It just depends how you model it. So I'm scaling this up with S and then grab in the Z axis to pull it down. Now I'm lining it up with the feet, but let's say I want to change the size and I think it wants to be a bit smaller. I can press scale again, but it's scaling in the middle. And that's not a great idea because I already spent my time lining it up with the feet. So let's undo that. Let's move the 3D cursor to this point here with shift right click and then I can change my pivot point to the 3D cursor. You don't have to do this, but it just makes your life a lot easier. So now when I scale, I haven't wasted my time moving the feet into position. So let's go to front view now and position this by pressing G then Y and moving it roughly into the middle there. Now he's got a little stand to stand on. It's a bit like Minecraft. And I'm going to create some grass at the top here. So I'm just going to duplicate this, Shift D, right click to set that duplicate and G then Z and I'll scale it in the Z axis I like this I'm still in the 3d cursor in fact so it's going a bit weird so I'll undo that and I'll go back to the medium point and scale it in the Z axis and then I'll just scale it out so it's slightly bigger and then it's got a sort of platform the only problem is it's cutting my legs off so let's go back to front view, G then Z, move that down, about there, there we go. So in the next episode, I'll talk about colouring in your sheep and rendering. Thanks for watching.